The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 13th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But if you got a question, you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger Stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. For the most part, all the U.S. indices trading the upside, the exception being the Dow trannies are off 96 points. The S&P is up 25. The Dow is up 137. The Nasdaq 172. The Russell's up 13. Semis are up 13 as well. Gold is up 27 bucks, one and three tenths percent, one and a half percent for silver, a 39 percent, a 39 cent move. Lights recruit is up a dime. Natural gas is up four cents. And a 30 treasury print out 132.10. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside, Mercado Libre up 42 bucks. That's nearly a little over 3%. MicroStrategy about 17 bucks or 6%. Solar Edge, 13 bucks, 5%. Netflix, 13 bucks, 4%. Asmill Holdings, 12 bucks, nearly 2%. Our shakers, that would be Granger WW off about 20 bucks, 3%. Saya Inc., the transport company, down 4% or 11 bucks. Parker Hannafin down uh, about 11 or 3%. Sarepta Ther Therapeutics off 10, 7%. And Progresso Corp. Down 6%, that's a $9 move. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. What do you want to look at? Let's go look at this chart right here. This is a chart for the Dow. So this is the cash indice. This is a weekly time frame that we're taking a look at. What I love about this uh, chart is that uh, well, we've got our horizontal trading range boundary lines. Those are the ones that are in green. We've got our diagonal trading range boundary lines up here. So if we just simply take a look at um, the descending one, that's what I want to focus on right now. So let's just do this here. Let me get to this set of chart parameters. Let me turn a few things off. Let's turn off that one. I didn't want to turn that one off. That's one I wanted to leave on. Let's turn off that one. Let's turn off that one. And let's turn off the horizontals. There we go. So here is the uh, Dow. This is a weekly time frame chart for the Dow. And what we can see here is prices made its way back up. It can, we can move a little bit higher than this. But what we can see is we are trading into the top of its descending trend line. So we are at or near where a top could or should form if, in fact, we're still in a downward market out there. The thing that would change that wouldn't be just a close above this descending trend line. I would say it would have to be a close because it's a weekly chart, a close above the high from descending. December the 12th out there. I don't have my data box up, so I can't tell you what that is. Shoot. Let me see here. See if that'll pop it open. There we go. That high would be 33,437. Call 33,438. If price were to close above that, then you'd have an A to B equals CD to the upside. But right now, what we've got is we have... Um, let me turn that data box off now. Uh, what we have is a price making its way up into its descending trend line. Now, we take a look at the horizontal trading range boundary lines, what we can see is, yeah, price could easily spike up to that 34,152. We have seen 11 
closes near or at this 34152 level, opens or closes um, well, over, over its history out there. So we know that that is a congregation area. That is a support or resistance. In this case here, that now is a resistance level. So you've got that resistance. You've got your descending price channels out there. And then uh, if I put on any of the other price channels out here, uh, this one, which is a longer term one, isn't really coming into effect. Uh, how about that one? That's not coming into effect. That was an older one. How about that one there? And at this stage here, that uh, the diagonal rising price channel doesn't come into effect. So here's what we know. We do know that the Dow, it's been a nice rally. It's making its way up towards resistance. We could really be there, or we just will get there when we see a spike up to that 34,152. If we close above 34,152, that would be a positive for sure. But right now, we take a look at just the general markets out there meaning the Dow specifically, we are up at resistance. If we take a look at what's going on inside the equity future contract, well, we know the ES Mini has a sell the D point pattern of the four contracts. It's the only one with a top. What's transpired since yesterday? The only thing that's really transpired since yesterday is that we do have we do have a new profile that is attempting to form inside the Dow. We won't have confirmation of this till 601 this evening. So far, pretty solid. 33,982 is resistance. Support? 33504. So those are the numbers. Jot them down on your pad of paper. Tomorrow we'll be able to confirm whether that profile forms or modifies or changes itself or just simply vanishes. Um, so, but no top inside the Dow, no top inside the Russell, just a consolidation with inside his profile, no top inside the NQ. Although price did get back underneath the top of its profile yesterday. And if we did get a second consecutive close below 13.062, I would say that would signal to you and I a retracement back to support, which is between 12.705 and 12.777 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the equity future contracts. Defining time wants to know what the ES mini looks like for a 10 minute time frame. So let's switch over to the white background charts out here see what we see for the 10 minute time frame specifically your question is steve can you look at the es 10 minute for a possible day trade so as we look at the uh, as we look at the es mini here this is the 10 minute chart what we see is an a to b equals cd pattern so that a to b point is going to look like this quite a uh, move out there and then uh, let me just slide this over we're going to move that over to the c point so it certainly has completed the one to one or it appears that it most certainly has but We'll find out here momentarily. Yeah, so it's completed it. It's gotten to the one-to-one -one level. A much stronger move on this uh, C to D leg, as you can see. But um, And you do have the bearish reversal candle. This is the key reversal session that took place at 1040 defining time. Do you see that? I don't know if you identified that. So a key reversal requires three things. First, you have to be in an extended condition. An A to B equals CD pattern getting towards the completion of that most certainly gets us there. Rhodes momentum indicator signal that gets us there as well. Uh, that's the so that's the first thing. Must be an extended condition. Number two, the high and low of the prior bar needs to be exceeded. In the case of the downside, it's not exceeded. It's exceeded to the downside. But you know what I mean there. And then number three, you must close one tick in the opposite direction of the trend. So there's your key reversal session. And what price is doing is pulling back to test support. That's that green oscillator and change line. Defining time, you say a day trade. Which style? to the north or to the south, a long or a short. Let me know, and then we come back from this uh, breakout here. We'll finish looking at the ES Mini for you. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the ES Mini. Actually, what we're looking at right now is the market breadth for the S&P 500. Um, defining time is short, the ES Mini. And so I want to take a look at the shortest time frame that I've got. And right now, there's 133 instruments trading above top of profile, 145, 146 below the bottom. So you are in the right position here. Forget the lines. The lines aren't drawing properly out there. But the market breadth in the upper left-hand side, that that is most certainly correct. Or I believe that to be correct out there. So you do have at least a bearish crossover uh, set of signals for the S&P 500. And I believe that is also matching right now inside the NQ, which is really what you want. You want both both really pointing in the same direction out here. And in the NQ, it's 22 above and 24 below. So it's pretty darn close out there. So you got to be careful. Let's go see what's going on on a 30 minute time frame chart. Obviously, I've got the uh, I've got the uh, uh, the 10 minutes still up on our, our screen up here. What you're looking for while, while you're short is you don't want to see this green oscillator and change line acting as support. So you really want to see it close below that. That's at 41.40 right now. If price does close below that, then odds favor that it'll make its way back to its next area of support on a 10 minute time frame defining time. And that's up at the 41.35 level. If it's only a counter trend move to the downside, because this is a bearish structured profile that formed on this 10 minute time frame chart then where price would find support or should find support would be 41.33 so your areas to be watching here you've got 41.40 so conditions even though on a 10 minute time frame you have a sell the d point conditions are neutral they're neutral because you're above two key resistance levels the top of a profile and the green oscillator and change line as we look to other time frame charts out here for the ES Mini, what do we see? We see a sell the D point on the 15 minute chart. Same rules though, it's neutral. Price above profile is green oscillator and change line. 30 minute time frame chart where it's just slightly negative, bearish from a TAS market profile standpoint. We don't have any kind of a top. We've got the A to B equals CD, but we don't have a bearish reversal candle. And price above profile, price above its green oscillator and change line. What it's really saying, defining time, is on the short side, for you and everybody else, make sure you've got some stops in place out here. Because even though we've got some short-term signals, their overall message to you and I is neutral. That's on the 10 and the 15 minute chart. The 30 minute chart is just simply all out bullish with no bearish reversal candle. The 60 minute chart is all out bullish. It's now trading above the center of its 60 minute profile at 41.41. 41. 
This suggests that price should be able to close on a 60-minute basis. That would be at 12 noon. Above 41.41 defining time would tell us that price should make its way to 41.54. Maybe 41.54 would be the area to be taken. A look at on the 120-minute chart, you really have the same kind of setup going on. Price is dealing with the center of its profile right now. It closed above that, which is nearly about the same area that we're trading right now. It's about 41.44, which suggests 41.57. So if you get a close above the high of those sessions that generated the bearish reversal candle, so that's going to be the price point of 41.47. You get a close above that. That tells you that you are likely on the wrong side of the trade and that price should continue to move higher. Now, on a 15-minute basis, the heat, maybe you can handle that, is up at 41.54. But I think you said you're in around 41 or you're at 41.45. So you're dealing about uh, a nine point a swing out there, 450 on a, a contract. So that's probably doable. But that's what I would be looking at when I take a look at the uh, S&P 500, the ES Mini, as we speak. So let me know, defining time, if that answered all your questions. If not, if there's some piece of information that you need, happy to get that to you. You do have that resistance up with that 4152. That's the top of its daily profile. And then, of course, its key reversal session, yesterday's bearish shooting star. So the ultimate resistance level really inside the ES Mini is up at 4177.75. Let's go to our next question out here. It's from David H., and David writes, okay, thank you. I have a stop before. Perfect. Okay. So uh, David H. writes in and wants to take a look at TMO. TMO is um, too much information? No, it can't be. That'd be TMI. TMO is, uh, it's not Time Warner. It is, I don't know what it is. It's uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific. There we go. So let's actually read the question from David. David's question goes like this. You looked at TMO for me a week ago or so. I have the 595 calls expiring on the 21st. Could you look at the charts and give me an idea of the upside potential during these seven trading days? So we've got TMO on the screen right now. What you'd love to see today, David, is you'd love to see it close above 586.34. There's an A to B equal CD that is in place right now. Um, it has achieved the one-to-one -one level that says be on the lookout for a bearish reversal candle. If you were to get one of those, that would tell you that you're now in a sell mode versus, let's say, a buy mode out there. 586.34 is the TD9 count breakdown level. That was formed or that generated on uh, February the 7th. So taking out that high would be a bullish outcome. You're looking for this to get to, you've got the 595 calls. I would say close to about 586 is going to signal to you that price's intent is to get up to 600.87. 600.87 is the top of the weekly profile. 601.86 is the monthly oscillator and change line. I believe that that's where you're going to really run into your resistance level, assuming that price closes the day above 586.34. And that's going to be at that 601 level, which is the top of the weekly profile. And it's the monthly green oscillator and change line out there. Let me see. What else do we have for Thermo Fisher Scientific? Let me... Uh, yeah, not really much else other than that. Let's do this, though, David. Uh, let's take a look at um, TMO. Let's see if we've got uh, historical, enough horse, historical data. Let's actually try to type in the correct symbol, TMO, and that's Thermo Fisher. So we do, and we have uh, 43 years' worth of data. So let's use all the data. And uh, right now you are in a, well, April is its most favorable seasonal cycle. Over the last 43 years, that is. This is the best month of the year. Uh, Wednesday and Fridays are your best days of the year, but Thursday is not a bad second out there. Mondays doesn't like Mondays. Hey, who likes Mondays out there? And it doesn't like the month of September. That's over the course of the last 43 years. This is set to really top out at about June based upon the seasonal pattern. How about the last 25 years? Same thing. Getting ready to form a bottom right now and should move higher. So we're in that favorable seasonal cycle over the last 15 years. Still somewhat favorable, but kind of peters out right around the uh, next week, the 19th out there. Uh, so that's over the last 15 years. And that last 15 years, that's got the... Uh, 2020 so i got rid of the march 2020 that's not doing anything out there so yeah i would stick with the uh, i would stick with this it looks good you're in the right seasonal time frame for thermo fisher scientific and they'd love to see a close today about 586.34 so david h 
in Panama City. I hope that helps you out. If not, please uh, write back to me, and I'll try to get you the information that you are looking for. Insider Tiger's Den, Dwayne the Bathtub, wants to take a look at Platinum. So let's go take a look at the Platinum. I hope I was on. Okay, good. Um, give me a second here. We'll pull up the uh, Platinum charts. And those platinum charts. So we're trading the July contract out here. Now, for the monthly and the weekly time frame, Dwayne, I've got the continuous contracts. The continuous contracts are, are suggesting that we should have the higher price, uh, 1,086 being a price target. The daily time frame, very similar to what we looked at with David H. for TMO. You would love to see it close today above 1040.50. Why? That is its TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Closing of that would be a beautiful thing. Now, that doesn't mean you're not going to see a short-term top because you really should. And that short-term top should start between about 12 and 1 o'clock this afternoon. And we should get some type of retracement out there. But you'd love to see this day above 10, 40, 50. That would tell you we're headed to higher ground after some type of short-term retracement. But we'll finish looking at Platinum as soon as we get back from this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So we're back looking at platinum, folks. Uh, so we can see on a 60-minute time frame chart, you've got a TD9 count top that is going to uh, confirm at noon. It will complete at 1 o'clock. We are in bar number nine as we speak right now on the 30-minute uh, time frame. Bar number eight qualifies, and as long as price closes above on a 30-minute basis, closes above 1054.60, and that's at uh, 12 noon, you'll have a confirmed TD9 count. What price should then do is pull back to its oscillator and change line, 1052. You're going to get 
a TD9 count or likely to get a TD9 count that completes at 1 o'clock. So the top may not be over out here. And if you take a look at the 4-hour and the 5-hour charts, 5-hour chart will go ahead, or the 4-hour chart, I should say, at 2 p.m. will complete a TD9 count. And in the case of the 5-hour chart, that won't be until late this evening before that takes place out there. But you've got a number of the topping signals here in platinum. Now, the cool thing there is that it's possible that these will get negated. And so the first place to start, the first place to watch, I would say, is the 30-minute time frame. So it's a 30-minute time frame chart that you should put up on your screen uh, and uh, and continue to watch it. Now, I don't know what the high of the pattern is going to be. I can tell you what the high of the pattern is thus far, which is 10.60.20. But we could get a spike above that between now and 12.30. So the 30-minute chart will complete its TD9 count or should complete it at 12.30. So whatever the high is, that's what you want to make note of. Defining time because if price closes above that on a 30 minute time frame, then that's telling you about a strong upward momentum move. And maybe the other TD nines will fail as well. But right now, you're, uh, what, what uh, Platinum is doing is running smack dab into pattern resistance out there. And so the next couple of hours will be pretty critical for it. When I say a couple of hours, the five hour chart's not going to complete its pattern until like 11 o'clock tonight and actually won't be till four in the morning because that'd be the bar following bar number nine out there. So I do hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the request. we got a number of other requests that have come in. The next one coming in from uh, Jim. Well, let me close these out so I can at least free up some space here. Give me just a moment to do that. We'll go take a look at uh, Jimmy's request from inside the Tiger's Den. The first one's going to be ticker symbol CAL. So let's get back to uh, those charts out here. And uh, CAL is drum roll drunny i don't know what it is i don't have to know what it is we're agnostic to it but it is calorous and if we take a look at it it's trading out at 2205 on my screen it says 2198 sorry about that it is really trading at 2205 as we speak right now does that matter no it doesn't really matter it's trading with inside a bullish structured profile out here it's really a consolidation uh, so to speak so to speak, I have to say. Your support level is really 2154 to 2174 and resistance up at 23 and a quarter. What I don't have here is any kind of a bottom pattern. This negated a TD9 count bottom. Uh, did it? Well, no, it never formed a TD9 count bottom. So I don't have any kind of a bottoming pattern out here. I just have a consolidation on the daily basis. I've got a consolidation on the weekly basis with price below the center of its profile, below its red oscillator and change line. A move to 2027 20, would not be a surprise, which is both the bottom of its weekly and its a, a monthly time frames out there. On a 30-minute basis, so we have had price moving lower. On the 30-minute chart, what do we see out here? What we see is 2181 is a level uh, to be watching, uh, Jimmy, if price closes below that, that's a TD9 count breakout level on a 30-minute time frame. That tells you about lower price coming at you. So I'd watch that to the downside. To the upside, I'd be watching that green oscillator and change line, currently about 22.17. If price could close above that, then you'd be looking at revisiting the most recent highs out here on that 30-minute time frame. So that's what I see when I take a look at ticker symbol CAL. But Jimmy had a twofer out there, and that second uh, instrument is going to be CPRI, Capri, out here. And CPRI is trading at about 43.67. The actual number is 43.73. And this is Capri Holdings. Now, Capri Holdings is trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. It has been for about a week, maybe six sessions out there. And it has been able to find support at that red oscillator and change line, 42.49. If price were to close below that, well, then that's telling us that it's going to go retarget or target the uh, swing point low or the swing point itself from March the 15th. And that's anywhere between the price point of 4023 at the low and 4154 at the high. The weekly chart. Price found support at its TD9 count breakout area. That's at 4198. You're back inside its profile. As long as price remains about 4297, may want to move up to 4570. The monthly time frame, kind of like the daily, a little bit troublesome. Troublesome from the standpoint that price is trading below profile, it's trading below its oscillator and change line. Its key level of support would be the low of the hammer candle that formed in May of 2022, and that's down at 36.90. So how are we going to summarize all of this, if we want to summarize it? I'd say um, you don't have a bottoming signal. Well, you had a TD9 count that took place all the way back here in uh, the early part of March or mid-March out there. But price is pulling back your below profiles. I don't have a great take on this, Jimmy. 
I don't know that I had a great take on uh, Cal either. So you've given me two curveballs. How could you do that? I'm just kidding you. So at a 30-minute time frame, the 30-minute time frame formed a Gartley buy pattern. So it looks like this. That's what my eyes visually see. Let's just make sure of that. So here's your A to B point. We'll just move that over to the C point out there. There we go. And eh, maybe not. Maybe Stevie's eyes aren't as good. I think that's a little bit too far away to call it a buy the D point or a Gartley buy. What we do have here on a 30-minute basis, uh, Jimmy, is prices back inside its profile, 43.65. Your next battle's at 43.89 and above that, 44.23. So that's about as good as I can do for Capri, CPRI. Sorry that I couldn't have performed better. Well, maybe I could perform just a little bit better. Let's just see if CPRI, oh, that's the wrong panel. You're not interested in that panel. This is the panel I meant to try to drag over there. And I got the time. So let's see here, CPRI, just to see if there's enough data in here. If there's any data. And there it is. So let's go take a look at how many years worth of data do we have. We've got 11 years. So in 11 years, if we take a look at what we were just looking at, you kind of see the sideways type action out here that we're sort of in this little consolidation and then slightly moving lower. And in essence, that's really what the daily and the monthly charts were communicating to you and I. So I think we're just in, uh, you know, April's a decent month. March is a terrible month. You know, you get a little bit of a counter trend move, it looks like, in April, or historically you have over 11 years. And then uh, you've got a terrible May out there. So I just be careful with Capri based upon the weekly and the uh, monthly charts that you and I looked at. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request, as always. Next request coming in from Joey D inside the Tiger's Den. And Joey's going to take a look at SRS, and that is the uh, ProShares real estate uh, ETF out there. Is that a double or just a single? Do you know? I don't know the answer to that. But as we take a look at SRS, maybe it's a double because I would imagine the single is the uh, XLR, XLRE out here. But as we do take a look at SRS, here's what we know. You're trading below profile. You're trading below green oscillator and change line. You're trading into a swing point. That swing point is from uh, May the April the 3rd. Swing point did volume of 87,000 shares. So far, you have done 65,000 shares. Price is moving lower with volume. If it closes below that low, that low being 1731, this is going to generate an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's what we see when we take a look at the daily time frame. Weekly time frame says, ah, not too much to worry about, Steve-O. I'm just in a consolidation. I'm trading above my green oscillator and change line. So that should take me up to 1995. The uh, monthly chart says I've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation. It's between 1479 and 2181 out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at XRS, XLRE, while we're going to break here. Just want to see if we've got that similar type of a volume pattern out here. And is the XLRE, what's it doing? No, that's not uh, showing the same thing at all. So maybe there must be different instruments inside XLRE versus SRS. Hmm. I don't know. But that's what I see, Joey. We take a look at SRS. Hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our next question. This comes in from uh, Greg. Uh, this is by email. Greg writes in, uh, would you look at this move in XBI? You trade the LABU and need an entry for this next move. What do you think? So you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside now. I assume it's going to be confirmed. The swing point that it's dealing with was from the trading session on a daily basis of April 3rd. Volume out there was 7.5 million. You're already at 5 million. Two hours of trading. So I'd say you've got a confirmed A to B equals CD. The price projection, the one-to-one -one level out here, I'm not going to draw it in. I'm just going to give you those numbers. I've got them on my other screen out there, Greg. And that's uh, the one-to-one -one is 79.86. The one-to-1.27, 1 281.24. And the 1.618 is 8301. Those are your price targets to the upside from a daily standpoint. The weekly says, hey, skip what Stevie said. When you get to 79.73, the weekly is lined up with sellers out there. Now, if price can close above 79.73, then you're looking at that move to 81 and a quarter, 83.01. So that's a, so you, beautiful move today, nice volume, set up an A to B equals CD, 79.86, but at 79.73, you've got weekly profile resistance and at 83.33, you've got monthly oscillator and change line resistance. So everything looks pretty good here, and at least you're pushing up into a resistance level with volume. You want them to keep stepping on the gas out there greg but uh, that looks pretty good so i do hope that that helps you out with of course you're looking for the next entry out there you're going to have to wait for a pullback and maybe we're about to get one here in the next couple of days or so as price deals with those resistance levels flex wanted to take a look at the spot volatility index out here so let's do this i went ahead and threw up a, a set of charts here daily weekly and monthly we don't do this too often so there was a TD9 count pattern that did form out here. It formed on April 3rd, and that was negated on April the 6th. Does that matter? I don't know if it matters or not. What we can see here, Fletch, is that all the rallies inside the VIX index have run into resistance at that red oscillator and change line. The red oscillator and change line tells us the price oscillator is below zero, and because price is below red line, it tells us it's falling. Those are bearish conditions out there. The monthly chart doing the same thing below a, a red oscillator and change line. Forget the profile levels out here. Those aren't real. I just don't want to change screens and all that uh, set up. So I don't have any kind of a bottoming pattern or anything along those lines. If anything, things are really somewhat kind of bearish for the spot volatilities. That would be bullish for the S&P 500. Fletch, if that didn't provide you with the information you needed, please let me know. I'll try to get uh, back to that uh, for you and get you what you're looking for. We had a request to take a look at Procter & Gamble. That was from John Z. That's not what we were looking at. That's not what John wanted. That's not what John wanted. What John wanted maybe was going to be this tab. Let's see. Do we have it? Yeah. Uh, Procter & Gamble. And that came in by uh, that came in off of uh, email as well. Ooh, the fine print is too fine for Stevie's eyes. Let's see if we can span this out here. Procter & Gamble, ticker PG. If you could bring up your long-term chart, Procter & Gamble doesn't seem to want to sustain any moves above 152.10. 
and I want to see Procter & Gamble go to 165 Would you buy PG and hold it for a year? Well, first, uh, what Procter & Gamble has done is it formed a TD9 count top, and it completed that pattern on April 6th. When you complete a pattern, what usually takes place, John, is price pulls back to test support. In this case here, that would be the oscillator and change line. What did it do yesterday? It tested and rejected support. What is it doing today? Tested rejected support, that green oscillator and change line. Its conditions are neutral. You're asking, would you take a long position now? But you want to do it for more of an intermediate term play out here. So, best advice I can give you is let's be patient. You should be patient because you want a longer-term move. And the reason that I say that, uh, John, is if I look at the monthly chart out here, we can see that price is consolidating with inside its profile. And we can see that this month, as well as the prior two months, not the prior two months, i sorry, the January and December of last year, but January of this year, price ran into resistance at 152.08. That's what it's done so far as we speak. So, I, I would hesitate especially with the daily, you know, having a TD9 count, granted that price has held support. I, I see that. And we could easily see a move up to 154.80. Could. But the monthly chart just says, just be patient out here. The 30-minute chart, let me see what the 30-minute chart tells us. 30-minute chart, um, not telling me a whole lot, other than price did find support where it should have at 149.95. That was its breakout level. So the, to answer your question, Wait, be patient, see if this thing pulls back, hit me up again if it does, and we'll then perhaps be able to find an entry point into Procter & Gamble. Jane wrote in, and Jane wants to take a look at uh, Walgreens Boots. Let me get over to her question. And it says, uh, could you please look at WABA? I have the 40 May 19 calls. Should I get out and re-enter at a later time? So we take a look at Walgreens Boots. Here's what we know. You've got a little bit of a consolidation right now with inside its daily profile. And price is testing the bottom of that profile. That formed yesterday. Whoops, that was at 35.42, I believe. Yeah, 35.42 is support. So would you get out? I wouldn't get out unless price closed below support. But then you still have another support level, uh, Jane, and that's down at 34.98 or thereabouts. I say thereabouts because it's the oscillator and change line, and that is going to change. Um, I don't have a top, so to speak. So without a top and just a consolidation of price holding support, I would stay. Walgreens Boots on a weekly time frame is consolidated with inside its profile, and price has hit resistance up at 36.60. We have a consolidation inside the monthly profile as well, 34.11 being key support there. So, well, let's look at a 30-minute chart. You know, we've had price pull back yesterday and today. What is that set up for us? Has it set up anything? And at this stage, the answer is no, it has not. It set up the potential, quite frankly, of an A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, and if that were to come to fruition, that would give you a one-to-one -one price projection level about, give or take, right around the 3503. It's called call it 35. Now, this could form a TD9 count bottom. And it could do that between, by 12, this is Mark 8, by one o'clock. But in order to do that, Jane, price must spoke, must spoke, or must spike below 35.43 between now and then, between now and one o'clock. And then you could get a TD9 count bottom pattern on the 30 minutes. So 30 minutes is somewhat questionable, but the daily says just hold on because price is back at its bullish structure profile and that area may hold. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Jane. Thanks much for writing in. If there's any price change inside Walgreens Boots, please write back in and we'll be happy to pull those charts up and get a feel for where price is headed to. Uh, we've got uh, AMZN. That's a request out here from Hector and Patty. They are our fuel injectors. And the question goes like this. It says, happy thirsty Thursday. Thank you. Same to you. Amazon, you see the potential for run to one. 14 top and break through this month. Any thoughts there? So we take a look at Amazon. What you really want to see this do next in order to really get on its merry ways is to close above about 10109. So that number is going to go up a bit. So let's just call it 10125. If it closes above that, then Hector and Patty are going to have a battle at 10183. 
and in a real battle at 104.20. So that 104.20 is where really where you get the answer to the question, will this get up to at least that 111 area? Because there's an A to B equals CD that gets us up to that range. We don't know how price is going to deal with the uh, resistance levels that we've already identified, 101.10, 101.83, 104.20. 114.08 on the monthly. Nothing, your weekly isn't the one giving you any problems out here. So you'd like, really like to see this close back above, or back inside his profile, Hector. That means a close today above 100.25. Otherwise, this could be telling us about lower price before we actually head higher. So I do hope that helps you out. Thanks much for the question. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back. Uh, a uh, Satish, I was writing, uh, we, we had a request out here for an instrument. I re didn't realize I was on the wrong set of pages. Uh, after the show, I'll go ahead and post them into the den for you. That was ticker symbol M-A-R. So my apologies uh, for that. Uh, let's go on to our next question out here. This is from Inside the Tiger's Den from Siegel. And Siegel wants me to take, he's, he's, he's asking about my thoughts on gold. And that may be gold and lights we crew, but we'll focus here on gold. That may be all that we get to, but we'll see. So we take a look at gold. What I want to do is give, kind of give you the bigger picture out here. And so to do that, we've gone to these charts. Now, I'm using my synthetic version of the uh, gold contract so that I can get these longer term uh, profiles out here. I've got daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly that are up on our screen. What I would first say this is if we take a look at the uh, weekly time frame chart, we can see the first high that was formed out here. That was back in 2020, August 2020 out there. Probably pull back even. Hold on a second here. 
So really, we could go all the way back here to September of 2011. Then that high, and we make just a slightly – now, we, we, we take on those highs back in August of 2020. So that's the first time that we try to take out those highs. The next time we do that, this is a weekly time frame, is March of 2022. And now, as we see price moving up towards that swing point area, this is going to be the third time up. Typically, not it's not a guarantee, but typically, it's not, an, it's not the third time that's the charm. Siegel, it's the fourth time that is the charm out here. So right now we have a series, at this moment in time, a series of lower highs out there. Don't know whether that's going to, uh, I, mean, I mean, gold's looking good. It looks like we've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. I'm just saying, I am just saying, it's usually the fourth time that up that will get you through and we're only at time number three to the upside you gotta like today's action on a daily basis you're trading above the top of its profile so that's a bullish outcome but you can see even on the bottom here look at that nice consolidation we're we're headed up towards the top of that consolidation pattern which by the way if we do close them up we break through the consolidation we're headed up to three grand i think it's likely not to be this time around we get one more pullback now that will be the final buy for Goldie Lines. Folks, stay tuned. you got great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Take care, folks.